Sometimes we ask, why would Jesus have to die for the forgiveness of sins? Why the cross? He's Jesus, he's God, everything is possible. He could just snap his fingers and the job would be done. All sins would be forgiven. After all, he's God. The Emperor Napoleon had a rule that said if any soldier were absent without permission or has been a defector, he would definitely be captured and then shot. On one such occasion, the runaway soldier happened to be the son of his cook. When captured, his mother came to the Emperor and she pleaded with the Emperor for mercy. Now he said to this woman, Woman, for what your son has done, he deserves no mercy at all. She humbly replied to him, Yes, of course you are right, she said. He, des he deserves no mercy, because if he deserved it, it would no longer be mercy. Well then, said the Emperor, I will surely have mercy. Notice, when the mother pleaded with the Emperor, she never said that her son was right. When she asked for mercy, she did not go to the Emperor and say, you know what, my son did the right thing. In fact, when she sent, she went and said, mercy for my son, she's acknowledging that her son did something wrong. The word mercy in itself indicates that something has been wrong. The word mercy in fact indicates that there is sin. You talk of mercy is also to talk of sin. Whenever, whenever the church talks of mercy, whenever the Pope talks of mercy, he's actually saying that, hey, listen, you have sinned. But what he's also saying and what is more important, he's saying that God's love is greater than your sin. Is sin terrible? Of course it is terrible. You want to know how terrible it is? Look, look at the cross and you will see how terrible it is. But now look at the cross again and you will also see how great God's love actually is. Sometimes we ask, why would Jesus have to die for the forgiveness of sins? Why the cross? He's Jesus, he's God, everything is possible. He could just snap his fingers and the job would be done. All sins would be forgiven. After all, he's God. Now, to answer that question, we first need to actually understand what sin is. Think of this, Adam and Eve in the garden go to that tree which the Lord has said, do not eat from this tree, do not eat from this tree. And they go to that tree, they take the fruit, of course tempted by the serpent and they eat the fruit and it's sin. Now it's not a problem of just one missing uh, fruit from God's favorite tree or it's not even as simple as a simple act of disobedience. It is a lot more. It ushers in a time of brokenness, a state of broken relationships. Sin is actually a state of brokenness, a state of broken relationships, broken relationships with God, broken relationships with nature, broken relationships with your family members, that is with others, your friends, and also, also a broken relationship with self. Sin is more than just superficial, is more than just something that we have done. It is far deeper, it is a burden and this burden of brokenness sometimes is very heavy to carry. It's more than what we've actually bargained for. Therefore, what does God do? God in his mercy does not just snap a finger, God comes down. God comes down into our brokenness, he comes down into our pain. And he humbles himself to be present here among us, here in our midst. Why? To transform our brokenness to joy. He wants to be with us. In fact, we need him to be with us. Why so? We need an encounter with goodness. We need an encounter with beauty. We need this encounter with perfection. We need this encounter with Jesus. Jesus says, whenever two or three are gathered in my name, there I am present. Where? Present in their midst. Think of it like this. Martha and Mary invite Jesus and he comes where? Into their midst. And what happens? Death is transformed to life. Sorrow is transformed to joy. The prodigal son goes away and he's on his way back. And his father sees him and his father runs to him 
runs where, runs in the midst of his hopelessness and he gets his son back. Think of the lost sheep. The lost sheep is gone away, left the fold. And where does the lost sheep find God? Where does the lost sheep find the shepherd? In the midst of its trouble. The world was in a state of brokenness. The world was in trouble. And where do we find God? We find God in our midst. The Bible says in John chapter 1, the word became flesh and dwelt in and dwelt in our midst and we have seen his glory now why did jesus have to come he came he came because he wanted to enter into our brokenness why to mend us from the inside without his mercy without his coming true joy would not exist pope francis shares a story or shares one of his experience that he had at a confessional an old lady comes to the confessional elderly woman humble comes and sits down there and Pope Francis calls her Abula Abula means grandmother uh, back from where he is and he says Abula why have you come here and she says I've come for confession do you want to confess of course I want to confess father she says then Pope Francis looks at her you know, lovingly, he was ready to leave actually when she came in and he tells her jokingly, but you have no sin and her answer comes you know, back swift and immediate, it says, we all have sinned father, maybe Jesus can't forgive your sins says Pope Francis, now this woman looks at Pope Francis and says, of course he can, are you sure he can and she again looks at him and says, you know what father if the lord did not forgive our sins if the lord did not have mercy then this world would not exist and how true that statement is without the mercy of god without the love of god it would be so difficult to even exist so ultimately what is mercy we all know the common meaning of mercy or the commonly understood meaning of mercy is that god forgives our sins and yes that's right no matter what we have done god forgives our sins but secondly and more importantly the mercy uh, the word mercy means that god comes and lives in our midst god comes and lives with us lives with his children when we pray the chaplet of the divine mercy we are saying for the sake of his sorrowful passion our father have mercy on me and on the whole world in a sense we are telling god is saying god come and dwell with me come and dwell in our land come and dwell in our home come and dwell in our workplace and we know that where god comes there comes his blessings there comes his joy there comes his peace now if you've enjoyed this video please go ahead and share it with everyone do not forget to like share and subscribe until we see you again take care and God bless.